Good morning everybody, a warm welcome to this, our service of praise and thanksgiving on this special Remembrance Day service here from St George's in Wilton. My name is Nick Griffin and I am uh, blessed to be with you today. Welcome, 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 whoever you are, wherever you come from, we are gathered to worship the Lord together. It's such a privilege to gather online and you are meeting at the same time as your brothers and sisters are meeting indeed in the church building here in Chaunton. Great to see you today. A few notices as we begin. We've got Buggy Buddies returning. Buggy Buddies is returning 10 o'clock this Monday. This is for parents with little ones. They can be in a buggy. They don't have to be in a buggy if they're toddling along. And really, it's a chance to get out of the house if you want to in a nice outdoor space so you're not feeling uh, concerned about COVID so much. And uh, normally, they try and rummage up a cup of coffee afterwards. Monday, 10 o'clock. Tell people if you yourself don't have a baby. Uh, Stay and Play also is on this Wednesday. It's on every single week. And a little plea uh, for those of you who watch this service. Maybe you would like to get involved. Stay and Play could really do with some extra supporters. It's one of those great ministries which is really booming, doing so well. And so well they need some extra support. So do get in touch with Stay and Play if you'd like to. Office at stgchurch.co.uk if that's for you. Uh, We also have our walking group, Footprints, Saturday, Saturday, 10 o'clock, coming up. Meeting this week at Cotherston Car Park. Do contact Nick Oliver uh, if you would like to be involved. Details there, all on the news board. That's Footprints, Saturday, 10 o'clock. Now, remember, Footprints is our slightly slightly more challenging uh, walks um, rather than uh, Stroll for the Soul, which is around uh, our local parks and things. Uh, More events coming up, absolutely wonderful. All this life and life in abundance happening here in this community. Stargazing at Wildside, Saturday the 27th of November at 4.30 till 6 o'clock. Really excited to go back up and meet our friends, uh, Richard and Alison at Wildside. It'd be lovely to go and see them and to gaze on the glory of the creation. Now it's suitable for all ages, um, but you know, especially the little ones and we're borrowing some telescopes. Somebody was telling me we've got a telescope where you tell the computer what it is you want to look at and then it helps figure out where it is in the night sky and then you put your eye to it and you can see. Absolutely wonderful. Really looking forward to the stargazing event. It will be really exciting. But brothers and sisters, as we gather today for this Remembrance Day service, we let us pray and welcome ourselves uh, welcome the Lord's presence into our spaces, wherever we might be. So Father, we ask that you would be amongst us by your Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit in power today, meet us in bedrooms and lounges, meet meet us in studies and on phones, meet us, O Lord, as we gather and think more about you and all you have done. Come Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, our first song this morning, Blessed Be Your Name, is a bit of a modern classic for in the high points and the low points, Lord, blessed be your name. Let's worship the Lord together. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. 
You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Wonderful song quoting from Job there. Well, on this special Remembrance Day online service, uh, we come to our confession. And it's been a while since we've had Martin Kirkbride in amongst us leading our services here. But he's taught us this confession uh, from the Coventry uh, community, uh, the cathedral, which is focused so much on reconciliation and particularly uh, reconciliation across borders and all peoples, and especially appropriate for us to do uh, join in with that today. So the words should come up on the screen now, and I'd encourage you to confess and bring yourself to the Lord through these words. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Father, forgive. The covetous desires of peoples and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive. Our indifference to the innocent, the imprisoned, the hungry, the homeless and the refugee. Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, we forgive. Lord, we are sorry and ashamed when we follow our own selfish way and fail to live to your praise and glory. Father, forgive. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and upon me. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So turning back to praise now, we sing an appropriate song for this day. Make me a channel of your peace. We worship the Lord together in song. Oh, 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 
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that we may, he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people, O house of Jacob. Indeed, they are full of diviners from the east and of soothsayers like the Philistines, and they clasp hands with foreigners. This is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I, uh, as we begin this morning, I want to introduce you to someone who I went to school with. His name is Tom Gaydon. He's a local lad here in Taunton. At school, people, if we're honest, were a little bit afraid of Tom. Although he was quite short, he we used to shave his head, he was a skinhead, and he had an unpredictability that meant you weren't quite sure what he'd do or say. He'd always surprise you. Whereas most people weren't sure at all what they do when they might grow up, Tom always knew he would be a soldier. At 13 or 14, I remember him running with rocks in his backpack. And when he finally joined up for his basic training in the military, he'd intentionally put more weight in his backpack to make him stronger, to make him faster and fitter, even though his companions mocked him for being slower on his runs. Now, I used to walk home with Tom most days, I'd often be late back from school at the end of South Road. We'd sit under, we'd, we'd sit and chat underneath um, a load of ber- uh, berries. And uh, my mum would worry because we'd say, you know, where were you? And most of the time when we were talking, we would talk about God. You see, Tom didn't really fit in in church. And his mum at the time said Christians didn't have to go. You didn't have to be a Christian to go to church. But he was such a strong believer. In the military, Tom told me once he'd sit in the bathroom stalls to read his Bible. He didn't want to get beaten up. Tom was exactly a day older than me. Well, he would have been, except his vehicle was destroyed by an IED in Afghanistan on Wednesday the 25th of February 2009. I miss my friend. We'll come back to Tom at the end. Our passage our readings this morning depart from our series in the heroes and villains of scripture to turn to Isaiah 2 in this classic passage that's been used on peace. Now Isaiah is written over a turbulent historical period. You see the engine of war of Syria is gearing up, it's taking dominance over most of the Middle East. The Assyrians were a cruel, they were a hungry people. They wanted land, they wanted money and slaves, they wanted power. And in 722 BC, the Assyrians crushed the northern states of Israel, crushed them, wiping them off the map, and indeed much of history forever. So when Isaiah speaks, he speaks of a time of very little hope. Their northern brothers were gone, and it seemed only a matter of time before teensy weensy Judah, and especially Jerusalem, was marched on. It seemed that tiny Israel, even with all her feathers puffed out, could not hope to stand against Assyria. It was like a boy throwing st- stones at a tank. It just wasn't going to happen. But Isaiah has this vision, and it's a vision of the future. Look again at those opening lines. In the last 
days. Isaiah has a vision of the end of time. He sees something and communicates his vision with images. They are everyday images, mountains and houses and streams and swords and plowshares. And this remembrance morning, we're going to look at what the vision is like. What is this end time, end of time, new heaven, new earth stuff shaped like? Well, who are these people streaming up the mountain? Well, first, they are described as both nations and many peoples. Two things to notice there. First, that both groups are talked about in plural terms. That is that future salvation, when we're thinking about heavenly reality, it's always talked about in people groups, uh, often talked about in people groups within the Bible. In New Testament terms, we talk not about me going to heaven, my resurrection, but the resurrection when we are raised. More to chew on that. Second, the groups maintain their identity, but they are united. That is, they're still identifiable. That's how they know they are nations. The vision is not specific about how they're identified, but the implication is that in a heavenly resurrected state, in a future state, I will still be English. Maybe I can queue uh, neatly for something or find a cup of tea somewhere. The French will still be French. The German will still be German. Uh, but notice verse four. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. That is, there will be justice. That God's justice will be established for all peoples at the last day. Which, if you think about it, is quite scandalous in itself. You see, Isaiah's own people are about to be attacked by one of the most vicious people to ever walk the earth. But more recently, we might think of reconciling justice between Hutu and Tutsi people of Rwanda, between the peoples of Northern and, uh, Ireland and the Irish Republic. True forgiveness and embrace between English and German, between Afghanis and the West, Afghanis and the Russians. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, he said. He will teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. You see, real peace is established. Real peace is established where swords are useless, spears are redundant. In fact, weapons are so defunct that it is better to turn them into gardening tools. Swords turned into plowshares, spears into pruning hooks. It's like a new garden state is planted with humans in it to work it. And where have we heard that before? Think garden think Eden. But there's more to it. Remember in Eden, those images of God walking with Adam. Isaiah's vision of the mountain speaks um, of the mountain as the house of the Lord. And the NIV, if, uh, I think that was probably our reading today, gets the feeling wrong there. It's not about temple, like a formalized place of worship. It's about God dwelling amongst his people again. The peace of God taught through his very presence amongst his people. That is the God, the peace of God with us. It's like Isaiah almost in this passage is shouting at us that what we see right now, back when they were being threatened by the Assyrians, and indeed brothers and sisters right now today, was this is not how it was meant to be. This is not how it's meant to be, but one day, one sweet day, he will make it anew. And so we find ourselves on this Remembrance Sunday. I love Remembrance Sunday. I love the fact that we honor those who have sacrificed their lives, that we remember, that we remember. But sometimes we for can forget why we remember. The old catchphrase is, lest we forget. And remembering, honoring that sacrifice is important. We must also remember how awful how stupid warfare is, that nobody really wins. The Germans lost the world wars, but so did we. The Iraqis lost the Gulf War, but so did we. The very name Afghanistan speaks for itself. History is our great teacher, teaches most things, including much of the future. Lest we forget and choose to do them again. My friend Tom died, what we know, 11 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. That was eight years into the Afghani war, a war in which I never heard a consistent reason for its operation. 
And we've seen recently, haven't we, the pain of withdrawing and what that's meant for those who have served and indeed what that's meant for the country itself. We forget. We forget too easily. We said to ourselves repeatedly, lest we forget. We've forgotten within a generation. And so I will tell my story of Tom, my friend who was lost. I want you to tell your children, to tell your grandchildren, your stories of blood and sacrifice. My granddad was in D-Day. I will tell my son and my daughter, tell your stories, lest we forget. But what now? Well, Isaiah and me don't like war. Big whoop. You could have heard that from Miss World and she would have been prettier. World peace. But what now? Well, friends, we know Isaiah's vision of world peace can only realistically be achieved by God bringing his justice at the last day. But we wait not always just for the kingdom to come, but in the now, we're to get glimpses and tastes of that. So hear the gospel of Christ once again. He says, not just love your neighbours, but love your enemies. Love your enemies. Who are your enemies that God is calling you to love? You see, talking about peace is fine and good when somebody else has to go and do it. We can wring our hands when politicians can't resolve the Israeli-Palestine problem or the persistent problems in Yemen. What about your enemies? The ones at work? The ones in your church? In your family? Who is your work, your, your enemy, that neighbour, work colleague, that student, customer? How are you going to love them? I challenge you to pray for them. To pray about them. Jesus says, pray for those who persecute you. I'm on this journey too, and I can honestly say I have prayed about someone I couldn't stand. An enemy of mine, and sort of, gradually, I came to stand them. My prayer is eventually I might love them. My brothers and sisters, on this Remembrance Day, tell your stories and love your enemies, lest we forget. Father, we pray that you would lead us into your ways. Help us to see as you see, away from the pettiness of every day and into your glorious life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue our worship now with our next song. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Let's sing together now.
Our prayers today, this Remembrance Sunday, will be in three parts. So we're going to start with praying over the poppy, and then a prayer that is connected to the Beatitudes, and ending with the prayer from Francis of Assisi. So if you haven't got a poppy, like this, pause and go grab your poppy, so we can then all pray together. So let us pray. Look at your poppy. Poppies are bright and cheerful flowers. So give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in war, remembering all the joy that they brought to their families and friends and all the good things that they did for their home and their country. Then look at the red petals. Red reminds us of danger and harm. Ask God now to be close to those who are still facing danger each day, to give courage to our armed forces and compassion to all who help others. Place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are also fragile and need to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting and those who are sad. Ask God to comfort all who are grieving, the loss of someone they love, or who are hurting and in need of the Lord's healing. Place a finger on the centre of the poppy and ask God to help you play your part in working for peace in the world. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, keep us from being preoccupied with money and worldly goods and with trying to increase them at the expense of justice. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Help us not to be ruthless with one another and to eliminate the discord and violence that exists in this world around us. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let us not be impatient under our own burdens and unconcerned about the burdens of others. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they shall be filled. Lord, make us thirst for you the fountain of all holiness and actively spread your influence in our lives and throughout society. Lord Jesus, you said, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Grant, Lord, that we may be quick to forgive and slow to condemn others. Lord Jesus, you said, blessed are the clean of heart for they shall see God. Lord, free us from our senses and our evil desires and help us just to fix our eyes on you. Lord Jesus, you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Aid us to make peace in our families, in our country and in the world. Lord Jesus, you said, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of justice, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. 
Make us willing to suffer for the sake of right, rather than to practice injustice. And do not let us discriminate against our neighbours and oppress and persecute them. Amen. And the prayer of St Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in with our worship and praise today. I hope it's been a blessing to you on this special Remembrance Sunday. Uh, do join us for Coffee Zoom at uh, the normal time. Love to see you there. Uh, God bless you and let I pray a prayer of blessing over you now. For the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you all. I'll see you very soon.